Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Harry Maguire denies Rift with Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United. Harry Maguire is currently Manchester United's captain. But Ralph Rangnick has asked Harry Maguire to step aside for the remainder of the season. Cristiano Ronaldo is set to become Manchester United's new captain to replace Harry Maguire. It's the right decision giving the captaincy to Cristiano Ronaldo. Harry Maguire is not a leader and a lot of Manchester United fans have been demanding for the captaincy to be taken off Maguire. Harry Maguire is not good enough to represent the club and Man United will look to sell him in the summer. Manchester United overpaid for Harry Maguire. We got him for £80 million. So he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and he's the second most expensive signing at the club behind Pogba. Maguire's been at Manchester United for over two years and he's endured a few injuries since he come to Man United. Don't forget, Ronaldo and Harry Maguire have held talks with Ralph Rangnick over the Man United captaincy. But revert back to Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldo scored an amazing goal against Brighton. That ended Ronaldo's goal drought and it was his first goal of 2022. Ronaldo should have had more than one goal against Brighton because he had some good headed chances. His overall performance against Brighton though was very good. Uh, not so long ago there was reports coming out saying that Ronaldo was irritating the squad because he wanted to lead the club and it mentioned that Rashford and Harry Maguire were unhappy. But Rashford actually came out and denied those claims. Since Ronaldo re-signed for Manchester United, he scored 15 goals in all competitions. He's got over 800 goals in his career. Manchester United re-signed Ronaldo last summer for £20 million with add-ons included. He wears a number 7 shirt. And his contract at Manchester United expires next year. There's an option to extend his contract for a further year. Ronaldo receives almost £500,000 a week. So he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. Uh, PSG are considering a move for Ronaldo. Revert back to earlier on this season, it said Man United consider swapping Cristiano Ronaldo for PSG boss Mauricio Pochettino. Uh, Ronaldo could quit Man United in the summer, halfway into his two-year deal. Ronaldo's already told his friends he's starting to feel his age. Next month, uh, Ronaldo's planning for showdown talks with his agent about his Manchester United future. And not so long ago, a report from Spain said that Cristiano Ronaldo and Ralph Rangnick's relationship at Man United is totally fractured.
But like I say, Ronaldo is the best player in the world overall. He's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. You know, Manchester United have a lot of good players, but on the other side of things, we have inconsistent players as well. You know, we've got Edison Cavani. He's a good player. Uh, Cavani recently returned to full training, so he's now available for selection. Um, he's just recovered from injury. Cavani's had a few injuries since he signed for Man United. Edison Cavani is expected to leave as a free agent in the summer. Not so long ago, it said Cavani prefers a move to La Liga. Earlier on this season, Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wanted to stay at Man United until the end of the season. He's out of contract at Manchester United in the summer. Man United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Uh, we have Marcus Rashford. Uh, Rashford's been in form recently. Uh, Rashford didn't start against Brighton, but he came on. He did well in the game against Southampton at Old Trafford. You know, he did get an assist in that game. Um, he did well at Turf Moor against Burnley. You know, he made some good runs, got in some good positions, had an early chance. And Rashford's cross led to that Josh Brown Hill own goal, but obviously the goal got ruled out. Rashford was good in the cup game against Middlesbrough, you know, he had some chances. Unfortunately though had a goal disallowed in that game. Uh, Ronaldo uh, sorry, Rashford came off the bench and scored the winner against West Ham. Before the international break, he also came off the bench and scored against Brentford. Reflecting on that, that ended his three-month goal drought. But a lot of United fans, including me, have said that Rashford has not been the same player since he had that operation on his shoulder. Rashford missed the first two months of the season with that shoulder problem. And earlier on this season, he had a minor leg injury. Rashford's contract at Manchester United expires next year. Rashford has been part of the club for a long time. He's been a Manchester United player since the age of seven, so he reason up our academy. And he broke into our senior squad back in 2016. And since then, he's gone on to make nearly 300 appearances in all competitions. Uh, we have Anthony Alanga. He's done very well since he broke into our first team squad. Ilanga, of course, played in the 2-0 win against Brighton. Um, obviously, he did get fouled by Lewis Dunk, and reflecting on that, Lewis Dunk got sent off. Don't forget, Anthony Ilanga missed a decisive penalty in the cup game against Middlesbrough. And reflecting on that, he got racially abused on social media which I totally disagreed with. Anthony Alangino you know, has been part of the club for a long time. He risen up our academy, he joined Manchester United's academy at the age of 12. And he's now, what, the age of 19. Revert back towards the end of last year, Alanga committed his future to the club because he signed a contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Uh, Jaden Sancho, he's starting to become very good now. Uh, Sancho did well in the 2-0 win against Brighton. He, he missed a breakaway chance. 
and in the game as well. He looked dangerous every time he got the ball. He got into good positions. Um, he did well in the game against Southampton at Old Trafford. He scored in that game. Uh, did well against Burnley at Turf Moor. Did very well against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. He scored in that game. And reflecting on that, that was Jaden Sancho's first Old Trafford goal and it was on his FA Cup debut. Sancho should have had more than one goal against Middlesbrough in the Cup because he hit the crossbar in the first 90 seconds. And there's other games I recall him playing well in as well. He played well in the game against Burnley at Old Trafford in the final game of last year but unfortunately was denied a goal in that game and he played well in the games against Chelsea and Villarreal away earlier on this season because he scored in both of them games. Sancho still done nowhere near as well as a lot of United fans expected, but it does take some players' time to settle in. Revert back to when we had Solskjaer, we couldn't get the best out of Sancho because Solskjaer persistently played him out of position. There was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. Sancho enjoyed four good years with Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Man United signed Sancho last summer for £78 million with add-ons included. Man United paid £73 million up front. Sancho's got a contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Uh, we have one matter. Don't have a great deal of a perception on one matter because one matter doesn't get in the team. Matter lost his place in the team a while ago and he's lost that yard of pace and he's aging up. But despite all of that, one matter has had a good career at Manchester United. You know, Matt has made around 277 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 51 goals. Matt has been at Manchester United for eight years, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Manchester United signed one Matt from Chelsea back in 2014, got him for £37.1 million. Brought him in under the David Moyes here, revert back to 2020. Matt rejected an £18 million a year contract offer to play in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Lingard still at the club. Um, he's not good enough to represent the club. Well, Lingard doesn't get in the team anyway, does he? But he has been part of the club for a long time. He is not part of academy in that. Lingard's out of contract at Manchester United in the summer. Lingard should have left in January, like I said, but Man United blocked his exit. Obviously, last month, Newcastle and West Ham were battling it out to get him on loan. Bruno Fernandes, he's also a very good player. He's one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Bruno Fernandes has been in form in recent games. Uh, Fernandes played in the 2-0 win against Brighton. He scored Manchester United's second goal and it came in the 97th minute of stoppage time. Should have had another goal against Brighton because he missed a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Um, against Southampton, did all right. Uh, Bruno Fernandes has been a Manchester United player for two years now. Man United got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Earlier on this season, Bruno Fernandes rejected a new Man United contract offer. Um, it said Bruno Fernandes' contract talks are postponed until the summer, having turned down an offer last year. At the time it came out, it said Fernandes was demanding similar money to the top earners at the club. Fernandez is under contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Fernandez earns around £100,000 a week. Uh, Paul Popper 
he's also a good player. He's not only a good player, he's an imperative player as well. Got to give Paul Pogba credit. He's done really, really well since he returned from injury. Uh, Pogba came on against Brighton and made an impact because he got an assist and he made some nice touches. Um, he did well in the game against Southampton at Old Trafford the other week. Unfortunately, though, had a goal disallowed in that game. Uh, scored against Burnley at Turf Moor. That was his first goal of the season. And did very well on his return against Middlesbrough in the Cup. Popper is injury prone because he has endured quite a few injuries since he re-signed for Man United. Uh, not so long ago, like I updated you, it said Paul Pogba is open to Premier League offers if he leaves Manchester United this summer. Uh, Pogba is out of contract at Manchester United in the summer, but not so long ago it said Pogba would be open to staying at Man United beyond the end of his contract. And revert back to earlier on this season, it said... Popper would be willing to stay at Man United as long as Ralph Rangnick is the manager for next season because it said Paul Popper has been impressed by Ralph Rangnick since his arrival. This season has been Popper's sixth season at Man United since he re-signed his one free trophies at the club so far. He's played over 200 games since he re-signed. And Manchester United paid £89 million for him. So reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. We had Pop who was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, Manchester United also have Scott McTominay. Scott McTominay is not good enough to represent the club. Uh, and I said earlier on this season that McTominay was one of our best performers under Rangnick. Because he has had his good games under Rangnick. But last few games, McTominay has been very poor, hasn't he? I think uh, Rangnick will play McTominay against Leeds. You know, McTominay's had two good games against Leeds. He played very well against Leeds on the opening day this season at Old Trafford. You know, Man United won that game 5-1 and he was very good in the 6-2 win against Leeds at Old Trafford last season. McTominay got a brace in that game. He scored two goals within, what, three minutes. McTominay... Has been part of the club for a long time. Revert back to 2020. He signed a new five-year contract at Man United. McTominay has played a lot of games alongside Fred in centre midfield. And obviously McTominay and Fred do not complement each other. And a lot of United fans have said we will not win anything with McTominay and Matic as our midfielders. Uh, Fred... He's not good enough to represent the club. We need to move him on in the summer. You know, Fred has been subjected to transfer speculation before. Uh, Fred has had his good games under Rangnick, don't get me wrong. Uh, Man United got Fred for around £52 million from Shakhtar Donetsk a few years ago. Now, I've got to make an admission regarding Fred. He was an exceptional player when he was in Ukraine. Uh, Man United also have Matic, not good enough. Well, Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders anyway, but despite that, he's still been given his opportunities. Matic is the only predominant centre defensive midfielder Man United have got at the moment. Uh, Matic is not available at the moment anyway because he's been out of a shin injury. Matic is out of contract at Man United in the summer. He'll leave in the summer. Matic has been at Man United since 2017. You know, he's been at the club for over four years now. 
Man United got Matic from Chelsea for £40 million. Uh, Alex Tellez, you know, he's a good left-back. He's really impressed me under Ralph Rangnick. He's appeared to be our first-choice left-back under Rangnick. There again, the last few games, Rangnick's decided to start Luke Shaw. But obviously not so long ago, Tellez had COVID. Uh, Tellez didn't start in the 2-0 win against Brighton, but he did come on. The reason Man United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Uh, Man United got Tellez from Porto back in 2020, got him for £15.4 million. Um, as for Luke Shaw, he's a very good left-back overall. He's enjoyed a lot of poor games this season. You know, he was far superior last season. But there again, you know, Luke Shaw's done well in the last few games. He's played, and you know, I've seen improvements. Luke Shaw's had a few injuries this season. He is injury prone, which is a concern. Uh, Shaw's been at Manchester United for around eight years now. So he has been a long serving player. Uh, like I say, we have Harry Maguire, not good enough to represent the club. Um, another one of the centre halves we've got is Victor Lindelof. Um, he's not good enough to represent the club. He's had a lot of bad games for Man United. But on the other side of things, he's had some good games as well. Uh, Victor Lindelof did recently play against Brighton. Um, he started ahead of Varane, didn't he? And to be fair, he did well against Brighton, did Lindelof. You know, looks good in possession. Got forward well and was very assertive on the ball. Lindelof's under contract with Man United until 2024. Man United got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017, got him for £31 million. Uh, Rafael Varane, you know, he's a very good centre-back. Like I said, uh, Varane missed the game against Brighton because he pulled out of the warm-up with illness. I think he had stomach pains. Varane, though, is available for the game against Leeds on Sunday. Most of the time when Varane plays, he seems to make the difference. You know, Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him because look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. You know, Man United signed Varane last summer for, what, 41, 42 million? Add-ons were included. Man United paid around 34 million up front. He's under contract with Man United until 2025. Um, he's had a couple of injuries since he signed for the club. The first injury he got was a groin injury. And then the injury after that he got was a hamstring injury. Uh, Man United also have Eric Bay. Um, he's another centre half. We've got uh, Bay. He's a good centre back, but doesn't really get in the team. Plus, is injury prone, which is a concern. Bay is out with injury at the moment. He'll leave Manchester United in the summer. Manchester United got by from Villarreal back in 2016. Man United paid £30 million for him. We brought him in under the Jose Mourinho era. By he's been at the club now for over five years. Revert back to April last year. By he signed a new contract with Man United until 2024. And we also have Phil Jones. Doesn't get in the team, does he? Uh, Phil Jones will leave Man United in the summer. At one point, Jones was out with an knee injury for a while. This season has been his 11th season at Man United, so he has been a long-serving player. I thought he was going to leave Man United last month, Jones. 
Bordeaux were in for him, but on deadline day last month, Fabrizio Romano said that Phil Jones rejected a low move to Bordeaux. Jones and Bordeaux had actually reached an agreement, you know, for him to go out on loan in order to get more playing time. And reports from France said that Phil Jones' talks were at final stages. But Rangnick did mention that he was happy for Phil Jones to stay. Uh, Diego Delo, not great, but to be honest with you, he's impressed me under Rangnick. He's put some very good performances out. Delo is our first choice right back under Rangnick. The Lord did well against Brighton recently. Do you think he'll leave Man United in the summer? Um, he's been subjected to transfer speculation before last season. The Lord had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that, he gained some experience. Man United got the law from Porto a few years ago. Man United paid £19 million for him. The Lord's contract at Man United expires next year. Aaron wan I think Man United will look to move him on in the summer. He's not good enough to represent the club. Doesn't get in the team now anyway because he's no longer our first choice right back. I think defensively Bissaka's good but the attacking side of his game is not so good. This season has been Bissaka's third full season at Man United. Man United got him from Crystal Palace back in 2019, got him for £50 million. And the goalkeepers Man United have got, um, obviously we've got David De Gea, absolutely world class. He's been very good this season, he's now back to his best. Uh, De Gea of course is our number one goalkeeper. De Gea was recently in goal for the game against Brighton and he did well, you know, he made some good saves in that game. Don't forget, De Gea did get named the Premier League's Player of the Month for January and reflecting on that, De Gea became the first goalkeeper to win the award in six years. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club. and He's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. This season has been his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long term and he's been with us since the Ferguson era. Earlier on this season, he did mention that he's planning to spend many more years at Manchester United. The highest contract at Manchester United expires next year. Um, so yeah, our second choice goalkeeper is Dean Henderson. Um, Henderson will leave Man United in the summer. Because he doesn't really get in goal. Henderson's already made three appearances this season. Not so long ago, Dean Henderson got arrested for abusing his girlfriend. Earlier on this season, Henderson had COVID for a while. Man United's third choice goalkeeper is Tom Heaton. You know, Tom Heaton's just a backup, isn't it? Man United got Tom Heaton on a free from Aston Villa last summer. And I still think Lee Grant's at Man United, so there you go. Uh, Ralph Rangnick. Wants the permanent Man United job. I don't think Man United will offer him the job on a permanent basis. Uh, Rangnick 
has been Man United's interim manager for almost three months now. He is Man United's interim manager till the end of the season then. He initially said he's expected to take up a consultancy role for a further two years. So far, Rangnick's managed, what, 14 games in all competitions as Man United's interim manager lost two games in all competitions so far and he's only lost one game in the Premier League. Rangnick has endured one transfer window as Manchester United's interim manager and unfortunately, Rangnick did not get backed. And he actually got promised as well he was going to get backed. Man United enjoyed a very disappointing January transfer window because last month we didn't make any signings. Should have Lingard and Henderson leave, like I've mentioned. And we had the incident with Mason Greenwood towards the end of last month. Around eight players, though, did leave Man United last month. In the summer, like I say, I'm expecting Man United to make signings. On the other side of things, I'm expecting a lot of players to leave as well. Before Manchester United, uh, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Lokomotiv Moscow. Got a lot of respect for Rangnick, he's a very good coach. He's a German coach and the vast majority of German coaches are very good. Uh, Manchester United's next permanent manager will be Eric Ten Hag or... Mauricio Potocino, Ralph Rangnick and Richard Arnold want Eric Ten Hag to become the club's next manager. Man United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. You know, four permanent managers have been sat since Ferguson. We sat David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and last year Man United sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So anyway guys, on my next video I'll be giving you my reaction to Ralph Rangnick's press conference ahead of Man United's game against Leeds. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless, see you all again very soon.